So you're ready to invest in an Hermes bag, but then you walk into the store and all the bags are encased in glass cases, just like a museum. And there's no way for you to go and hold and touch and feel that bag, compare the textures, and there's no guidebook teaching you the types of leather that Hermes makes. And on top of that, there are so many to choose from, from Togo, Epsom, Chev. And you're thinking, what are the differences? What suits me the best? Which one is more durable, less prone to scratching? And ultimately, why should you care? Aren't all leathers produced the same anyway? In today's video, we're going to address the most popular leather choices in the Hermes collection. We'll discuss the best choices for durability and of course the best for investment. Remember to watch until the end where I will give you a summary of the best leather choices in the Hermes handbag collection. So let's get started. So let's talk about all the different leathers and I'll be first listing them out in terms of chronological order. Let's start with box leather. This leather is the oldest material used by Hermes and has been in use by the house since the 1890s. It was named box leather to honor the famous British cobbler Joseph Box, who had a huge following in London by the petit bourgeoisie. The box calf leather is rigid, smooth, and has a semi-gloss finish. It is also one of the leathers that will develop a beautiful patina after decades of use. So because it is so smooth, scratches are easily seen but the great thing is it can be easily buffed out. And over time, this leather will develop a lovely sheen that is enhanced with regular care. So a black box leather handbag paired with gold hardware is the most iconic Hermes bag that many collectors around the world would desire, as it really represents that iconic design and the history and the heritage of the Hermes brand. So while the leather is still in production today, it's very hard to find new Birkin and Kelly bags made in box leather. And this is even the case with the resale market. And um, so you'll find that because of its rarity, again, the resale value of box leather handbags, it can be quite high. And, and in most cases, these bags will be vintage because um, they're not that highly produced today. All right, the next leather we're going to talk about is Torillon Clemence. This leather, Clemence, was named after the daughter of the designer who brought in this leather to the Hermes collection in 1992. So the leather's official name is Vaux Torillon Clemence and is characterized by its supple and grainy texture, which is very similar to another leather called Togo, which I will discuss later on. Clemence leather is made from the male bull calves, while Togo is made from the female. You'll notice that the Clemence leather has a wider, uh, flatter grain and shows less veining than Togo leather. For those of you who are interested in verifying whether your bag is authentic, is to really study the characteristic of the leather, and especially if it's Clemence or Togo, um, they should have these very distinctive um, leather patterns or markings. Um, the ones that are not authentic will be more uniform, whereas the ones that are authentic will definitely show this characteristic. So Clemence leather is incredibly soft to touch and is also loved for its more slouchy, casual appearance. So the downside of Clemence leather is it does not hold its resale value as well as the other leathers because it has a tendency to look a little more worn, a little less um, supported, uh, through time. It's also heavier in weight and can also make water stains more visible. So according to Sotheby's, uh, this leather actually normally resells at a 20% discount to its other leather peers. Okay, so the next leather we have is Togo. This leather was introduced in 1996 and is named after the Togolese Republic in Africa. So Togo leather is highly popular for its fine grain and soft pebble texture. So it's made from calfskin and has a signature vertical veiny grain surface, which is noticeably raised to the touch. And this leather has more of a personality where you can really see the veins and the wrinkles on the surface. And most importantly, this leather is loved by most Hermes collectors for its scratch and water resistancy. And compared to Clemence, this Togo leather is lighter in weight. And the great thing about Togo is with use, uh, through time, it will also develop a lovely sheen and also become more supple. So you can think of it this way, Togo is like the half-sister of Clemence, 
Uh, Togo is made from the female calves and Clemence is made from the male. So they have the sort of the sister brother relationship. Okay, let's talk about chevre. Chevre was introduced around the 1990s as well. And please note that handbags made with chevre are actually quite rare. Currently, chevre is mainly sourced from India and is a type of goatskin that is known for its unique texture and grain. You'll find that it's normally shinier than other leathers. And most importantly, it has a very distinct spine pattern running down the center. And this comes from a technique in leather making called boarding. You'll find that a lot of Birkin and Kelly bags have lining made from goat skin and you'll see that spining pattern inside the Birkin and Kelly bags. So you'll find that the chevre handbags are now exclusively made on a special order process. So that makes it more rare and unique and so they are really hard to find in store and also in the secondary market, which also helps um, its resale value down the road. Okay, let's talk about Epsom. Epsom was introduced in 2004 and was used to replace an older version of leather called Courchevel. So Epsom has a smooth, rigid texture that's really resistant to scratches and scuffs. This leather is heat pressed and features a small hatch grain that gives the leather a unique stiffness and durability. And Epsom leather is exceptionally favored by collectors because of its ability to really absorb the nuances of the luxurious collection of colors that Hermes has to offer. Epsom leather was particularly chosen for, for the candy collection in 2010 when it was paired with new neon colors released by Hermes with contrasting interior colors. So this leather is in fact one of Hermes's favorites and you'll find it used in many designs and styles. So if you're looking for something that's durable and, and will withstand the test of time, Epsom is your friend. Okay, so let's move on to 2006 and Hermes introduced the Swift Leather. This leather was actually uh, used to replace an older version called Hermes Gulliver and it's now the most soft and smooth leather you can find. So this leather is one of a kind for its really velvety touch. Once you've touched a Swift Leather uh, handbag, you'll know what I mean. It's just, it's like if, if I could make a comparison with fabric, it's like silk in the fabric world. And this is what Swift is for leather. So because this leather has a very fine grain, it also absorbs color very well. And you'll find this leather is mainly used for a lot of small leather goods that Hermes has to offer. The downside of this leather is it's very floppy. So because of its lack of structure, uh, definitely the resale price of this leather is different, not really comparable with the other ones that were mentioned before. And of course, a notable mention is the Hermes Exotic Leather Collection. With exotic leathers, we're talking about crocodile, alligator, ostrich, lizard. So you can imagine these exotic skins are extremely expensive and extremely exclusive. Um, not very often can you find one in store. And even if you go to an auction house like Sotheby or um, a secondary market reseller, the prices are exorbitantly high. And this is really because of its rarity and its status of luxury. So if there were a pyramid in the leather food chain, I would say that exotic leathers is way up on the top. Okay, so when presented with a choice, which leather should you consider? So if you're looking for one that is most durable and can really stand the test of time, I have my list for you. So ranked at the top, I have to say would be the exotic skins because they are naturally stronger and more durable. And that would allow them to be more resistant to the normal wear and tear of day-to-day -day use. Next would be box calf leather. So we know that box calf leather is known for its smooth, rigid texture. And because of that, it holds its shape much better and it's much more durable in that sense. And even if you get scratches on it, it can be buffed and it will develop a lovely sheen and patina. So that makes it also quite durable. Thirdly, we have Epsom leather. Again, Epsom leather is highly durable and is resistant to scratches and scuffs. So I would say it, it's one of the top choices for a Hermes bag that you want to keep for a long period of time. Next one would be Togo leather. Because of its fine grain, uh, Togo leather is also quite durable and also is known to maintain its shape and texture very well. Next one would be the chevre leather. Goat skin is known to be very durable and is also resistant to scratches and has a lovely sheen, so it uh, maintains its uh, texture very well through time. All right, and then we come to the laggards would be Clemence leather. Because Clemence leather is somewhat less rigid than its other peers, 
which can affect its long-term durability. It's still a good choice, but with time, the wear and tear on this on a Clemence bag will be more visible. And lastly, Swift Leather would be the last choice in terms of durability because it's one of the softest leathers that um, Hermes has to offer. And of course, it's so luxurious and soft to touch. It will definitely also show signs of wear uh, much quicker. So um, that one is something to keep in mind. Okay, so let's get to the best part. Which leathers are the best in terms of resale value? So keep in mind, resale value depends on many factors. The condition of your bag, the size, the shape, the color, the hardware and of course the leather. So let's keep everything equal and just focus on leather alone. And this would be my list. Again, topping the list would be exotic skins. Hermes has made exotic skins so rare that this reason alone has kept its resale value at the highest level. So if you have the chance to get your hands on a exotic skin from Hermes retail store, definitely jump on that opportunity because it will repay you in many folds. The next one on my list is Chevre Leather. This one could be a bit contentious. People may argue no, but I do feel that because Chevre Leather is now exclusively only produced on special order and because of its unique texture and nature and has a very nice shiny sheen to it, um, especially under the sun, um, I would say that this is quite sought after in the secondary market. And because again, rarity of a bag or of a leather will create increased demand and that will also help increase its resale value. All right, the third on my list would be the box calf leather. Again, box calf leather you cannot really find in the store these days. Mostly are from vintage bags. You have to seek them out in the secondary market. And the good thing about box leather is it's because it's so strong and rigid and, and has such a perfect structure and shape, it really enhances its longevity and therefore its resale value is also a great reflection of all these positive characteristics. And another thing is the patina that it develops is quite unique. You don't really find this in the other types of leathers. So the patina, the structure, the smoothness of this leather, and because also I believe Grace Kelly was graced with the box leather Kelly bag. It all adds to its allure and its appreciation in the resale market. Fourth would be Togo leather. Again, because it's very durable, it has a lovely texture and it's resistant to a lot of the day-to-day -day wear that um, many handbags have to go through, which also increases its resale value. Okay, in fifth place, we have Epsom leather for its durability, its pristine appearance, its lovely ability to absorb the colors so well and showcase um, beautiful colors of the Hermes handbag collection. So if you have an Epsom leather bag in the brighter, uh, more vibrant colors, that would definitely help increase its value. So the last two leathers I have are Clemence and Swift. And as you can imagine, Clemence and Swift are both the softer, uh, less structured, more casual looking leathers. And so this will definitely affect its resale value in the secondary market, something to keep in mind, um, but still very lovely handbags nonetheless, but they are less durable and that would affect its resale value. So again, whatever leather you choose, do remember to always take care of your handbag. Make sure to avoid humidity and excessive heat, UV sun rays that could damage the color and the finish of your leather. And whenever you feel that your handbag needs a little bit more TLC, just bring it back to the Hermes store for a spa service just to maintain the texture and the condition of the leather uh, that will definitely help enhance its longevity and also its resale value. So again, I hope this video gave you a better idea of all the leathers that are out there. These again are the most popular leathers that are offered by Hermes. They have so many more, but to keep this video a little bit more uh, manageable, I've selected only the most popular leathers. Please check out my other videos. I made a great video on what Hermes colors to invest in and also a recent review on the Hermes Gypsy Air bag. Please like and subscribe and I can't wait to see you in my next video. Bye now.